Well, welcome. My name is Kelly. I'm the owner of Dog Kind, and I specialize in very fearful dogs, feral dogs, street rescues, um, puppy mill rescues. And today we're talking about setbacks or regressions, those times when it seems like your dog has made a lot of progress, and then all of a sudden they're way back where they were, you know, weeks or months or even years ago, and what to do about it and why it happens. So let's jump into slides. Recovering from setbacks, what to do when your fearful dog regresses. Who is this for? This is for you if your dog has had significant setbacks in their behavior and you don't know how to help them recover. Why do dogs regress? It is always going to be due to some change in the environment. Maybe it's a big scary event or an ongoing change in the environment or even an ongoing change inside your dog, which is also part of their environment. A really common example of a single or one-off big scary event that causes a lot of dogs to have setbacks is the 4th of July fireworks. An ongoing environmental change could be something like the air conditioner or heater kicking on and off, which changes seasonally, especially if you have exterior units, that might cause your dog to start to be reluctant to go outside. How about changes inside the dog? Well, physical illness and pain can definitely increase fear and anxiety and change behavior. How to deal with setbacks. Step number one, see your veterinarian and treat potential physical causes of behavior change. This is really important. See your vet, tell them about the behavior changes you're seeing and ask them to assess your dog for potential sources of physical pain, any illnesses, or in senior dogs, sometimes cognitive decline can be a cause of increased anxiety and behavior change also. Next, identify, if possible, what caused the setback. Was it a one-off, big scary event? Is it something ongoing? If it's ongoing, do your best to avoid, eliminate, or reduce it. Training will be very difficult if the scary thing is still happening. So how might you reduce or eliminate uh, scary stuff in the environment. Let's say your dog got spooked because of a gate slamming in the wind. Go ahead and put some locks on those gates. Make sure they're secure so they can't scare your dog again in the future. If outdoor sounds bother your dog, sometimes just closing the windows will be enough. And outdoor noises, of course, can vary a lot seasonally, especially if you live near a school. You can also put up window film or close shades if it would help your dog not be stressed out by things they're seeing outside the window. Step number three, once you have addressed any potential physical issues, you've identified the problem, the cause of the setback if possible, and you are doing your best to either avoid it or reduce the intensity of it, next you can start training. You'll want to start training wherever your dog is comfortable right now. And this can be really difficult and a little bit depressing <laughs> because often you might have to start so much farther back than you were recently that it feels like you're starting over. The good news is that if you can be patient, don't push, just work systematically through your training like you did the first time, most of the time progress is much faster when you've already trained something and you're sort of retraining it. I have a client example I thought might be helpful to show how much you might need to step back. This is Skye, one of the dogs in our Confidence Builders Club membership. And after the 4th of July this year, she no longer wanted to go outside. And that was a bit disheartening. Her mom had spent many months getting her even comfortable enough to leave this room, much less go outside. So first we just placed a snuffle mat next to her bed to see would she even be willing to eat off of something that close to her bed. No, she was not. We added another snuffle mat to make it higher to see, well, if she doesn't have to reach down, will she try it out? She still wouldn't eat off of that. And so we said, okay, what else can we try? Let's have mom leave the room and we'll still keep the snuffle mats really close to her bed. So here now we have her putting one and then two feet, two paws out of her bed and she's now willing to eat out of the snuffle mat. So that is a step in the right direction. You'll notice, however, she was just bumping that mat on the bench and that was a bit off-putting for her. And so we made another small adjustment here where we took that mat away and moved the snuffle mat a little bit. And here she is again, stepping out of her bed with two paws and eating out of the snuffle mat. Now this may be a far cry from walking across the room, across the rest of the house and out the back door, but this is what she needed to do. And in fact, she did bounce back within a couple of weeks and was going outside again. 
Finally, another strategy that can be helpful is changing something in the training picture. For example, if your dog is spooked in a particular location, sometimes moving training to a different location, if possible, can be helpful. Introducing some new prop or something into the environment that helps your dog distinguish between this new setup and the previous scary setup. Even having a different family member train can be helpful. So for example, if your dog had been learning to enjoy walks in your neighborhood and now they are not willing to walk in your neighborhood and they're comfortable in the car, maybe take them somewhere in the car away from your neighborhood and try to start training walks again in a new location. And then you can slowly move back toward the home neighborhood. But that would be a way where changing the picture might help you make progress faster. So in summary, dealing with setbacks, see your vet, rule out or treat any potential physical issues. Eliminate, avoid, reduce the scary thing if at all possible, whatever caused the setback. Train starting from wherever your dog is now, even if it feels like you're going all the way back to the beginning, remember you're very likely to make much faster progress this second time around. And if you need to, or if it's easy to do so, change the picture, the training picture, location, something in the context, some, that might help you make better progress. Don't forget to grab your free guide, Caring for Your Fearful Dog, at dogkindtraining.com care, and I will see you next week.
recovering from setbacks, what to do when your fearful dog regresses. This is for you if your dog has had significant setbacks in their behavior and you just don't know how to help them recover. Why do dogs regress? It's almost always, or I suppose it's correct to say it is always, due to some change in the environment. Perhaps a big, scary, one-off event, maybe an ongoing change in the environment, or something that has changed inside your dog, which is also part of the environment for them. Oops. Fourth of July is a big example, a common example of a big one-off scary event that can cause setbacks. An ongoing change might be something like the air conditioner or heater kicking on with seasonal changes. Um, a lot of us don't think of that, but some dogs start to be afraid to go outside if there's more noise outside uh, sometimes of the day. And then in, in terms of changes inside the dog, pain or illness can be a big one that can really affect behavior. So how do we deal with these? How can we help our dogs recover? Step number one is see your veterinarian and treat potential causes of behavior change, potential physical causes like physical pain, illness, or sometimes cognitive decline, especially in older dogs. Next, if you have, to the best of your ability, ruled out pain or are treating any physical issues, You'll want to do your best to identify what caused the setback, and if it is ongoing, figure out how you can avoid, eliminate, or at least reduce your dog's exposure to it. Training is really hard, and it's really hard to make progress if the scary thing just keeps happening for your dog. So for example, say your dog got spooked when they were outside and the wind slammed a gate, go ahead and uh, put some measures in place to make sure those gates are are really solidly locked or braced in some way so that they're not going to scare your dog again. If outdoor noises are what um, you think is worrying your dog, sometimes closing windows and doors can be enough to bring that stress level down. And outdoor noises can fluctuate a lot seasonally, especially if you live near schools. Another way to reduce exposure to stressors can be window film or closing the blinds. So sometimes something outside your the windows that your dogs can see out of changes, and that's something then you have to find a way to reduce their exposure to. Step number three, so you have addressed any physical issues, you've identified what the problem is, and you've tried to reduce it or avoid it as best as possible. Now you're going to start thinking about training, and this can be pretty tough, but you're going to train where your dog is comfortable right now. This can be really hard because what you're, it might be way, way, way farther back in their training progress than they have been recently. And so it can really feel kind of depressing <laughs> as you fall back and have to start, feels like you're starting all over again. But if you don't push, you go back to where they're comfortable, you work carefully going forward, most of the time dogs tend to recover more quickly and make faster progress after you've already worked through an issue. Um, I have a client example for you that I thought might be helpful. I think it's here. Okay, so here is Sweet Sky. She is one of the dogs in our Confidence Builders Club membership. And after the 4th of July, she didn't want to leave her safe space and go outside nearly as readily as she had previously. And her mom had spent many months training her to be comfortable to leave the safe space and then eventually to go outside to eliminate. So as you can imagine, it was somewhat disheartening when she had this huge setback. And during a, a live session, during the um, one of our membership Q&As, we worked on this and we said, okay, let's just figure out what she can do right now. So in the beginning of this video, there's a snuffle mat with treats in it right next to her bed. Uh, and she would not get out of the bed and, and eat that, eat what was in the snuffle mat. So then 
We added another snuffle mat on top so she wouldn't have to bend down. She should have been able to just reach from her bed without putting her feet out of the bed. She still wouldn't eat from that. Then we tried having mom leave the area. And now Skye was willing to venture out, put two paws outside of the bed and eat some goodies. But we did make an adjustment here. I don't know if you can tell, but she's hitting that yoga mat that's on the bench with her ear. And that seemed to kind of bother her a bit. And so we made a small adjustment and she moved the, I think she just removed that mat. We also moved the snuffle mat a little farther away from the bench. So even, so what you might be tempted to do if you were in this situation is, well, my dog isn't going out um, like they used to be. I will try to lure them outside. And, but during this session, at least, Sky was saying, I'm not even willing to put all my paws outside of my bed. And I'm not even willing to put two paws outside of my bed unless the conditions are right. And so we just had to figure out what those conditions were in which she could start to make progress, even though this might feel like tiny, insignificant progress. It really isn't. And she did end up bouncing back, I believe, within a couple of weeks and was back to going um, back outside. Another tactic you can try that can make a pretty big difference is if you change the training picture quite a bit, um, change the location. If your dog has had a bad experience or just for whatever reason is behaving as if they are more frightened in one location, try some, a new place, um, put something new into the training picture so that it's distinct from the one where they're having trouble, possibly have a different family member train them if you have that available to them. For instance, if you have a dog who used to walk in your neighborhood and is now really afraid to do that or stop doing that, you know, if they're not afraid of the car, can you pop them in the car and try to work on walking in a different location? That might be your in um, to reintroduce them to the joys of walking and then slowly move it back closer to your house. So in summary, if you're struggling with regressions or setbacks, see your vet first. Any sudden change in behavior, always worth trying to see if there's any underlying physical cause. Because if there is and you don't address it, you will really struggle to make progress. Next, identify and then eliminate, avoid, or reduce the scary thing that has caused the problem, if you can figure out what that is. Train from wherever your dog is right now, what they are telling you they can do right now happily. And sometimes making a change in the training picture can give you a little boost in training. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to get your free guide, Caring for Your Fearful Dog, at the link below, dogkindtraining.com care. And if you have any questions, I will hang out for a minute or three. Um, and do feel free to, uh, to pop your questions in below where you're watching this video and um, I will stay to answer them. Okay. Anybody, any questions about regressions or anything else you wanna talk about today? Hopefully my video is not lagging behind. Yeah, it looks okay. All right, um, if there aren't any questions, then I'll be back next week and I'll remind all of you that I'll be here live and um, I'll be available to answer your questions for at least a few minutes, same time next week. Uh, have a great rest of your week.